Hey everyone, welcome in to a, another daily editorial here on the KE Report. We're chatting with Joel O'Connor and we're going to go around the horn here talking markets. The rebound that we continue to see as markets creep towards all time highs. We'll also recap some recent earnings reports and get Joel's comments on some of the commodities too as gold continues to run higher. Joel is the co host of the Benzinga Pre Market Prep Show, also editor of the Pre Market Prep website, which we will post a link to in the show notes. Joel, let's talk about uh, the markets first and foremost. A little bit of a volatile day today as markets are more or less neutral for the day. Fact of the matter is, though, we are continuing to see a rebound here. The S&P is getting close to those all-time highs. Volatility has come back down into the low teens. Joel, that sell-off last Monday seemed to be a great buy-the-dip opportunity. It mostly is continuing. What's your thought on this market's continued rebound? Ah, good morning. Thanks for having me. Boy, oh boy. I mean, you put it, you pretty well stated it there is uh, that was quite a buy the dip opportunity. Uh, you have to be looking at this market right now and looking at this rally and it's just uh, the sell the rip opportunity. I mean, the kind of gains s and P's are rallying 470 handles off that low from it will be two weeks on Monday. That's a year. That's a year's worth of gains. So and you know how I give different perspectives to different people listening to your show. If you were sitting fat and pretty in the beginning of July and you thought you were the smartest, greatest investor in the world and you were ready to take some chips off the table, then the following Monday you saw what happened, you're back up in this area. And I'm not recommending, you know, it depends where you're at in your investing horizon. But man, if you're looking to put on some hedges, if you're looking to take Saints off, the market, I think, is giving you a great opportunity here. Does that doesn't necessarily mean that you know we can't rip the six thousand, you know, sixty five hundred, which some people think. But boy, oh boy, I mean, you can't look a gift horse in the mouth, and I think that's what the market gave you since that low last Monday. Well, Joel, you bring up an interesting point here about a lot of people saying just a week or two ago, "Oh man, I should have taken profits when I had them, or I should have taken profits at those highs." Then everything sold off. Now, to your point, everything's back up here again. How do you, as a portfolio manager of your own money, deal with something like this? Do you scale out of a position? Do you just take some positions <sighs> off? Or do you do more of the hedging and, and taking counter countermeasures just in case this move falls apart? Well, in our portfolio, sell is a four-letter word. I'm not a market timer as far as you know, trying to make the ups and downs. Uh, but I'm definitely not adding any positions up here. I would not be adding and if I was near retirement or I had a big event, you know, something that I needed the money for, I would be looking to do my portfolio and, and be trying to find stuff. I just don't think that's I mean, you can't always time the market with the buys like you had last week. But from a personal standpoint, I have way too much cash already. So selling stuff wouldn't really make any sense. And buying stuff at this area, I think you get a chance to see, you know, lower prices. There's a lot of things going on. You went from a half Fed cut, half point, that's for sure, half September, half December. Now I don't even know if a half is going to happen in September. It could be a quarter. You get a hot jobs data uh, starting September before the meeting. That may take the quarter off the table. A lot of unknowns out there. Also, with the election, things are heating up. I expect volatility going into the uh, uh, to the election. And then the final thing here, and a macro thing, which I have no control over, is you know what still the ramifications of the yen carry trade. Now, I don't know if you guys follow the markets on a minute by minute basis, hour by hour, like I do. But, you know, the S&Ps were substantially higher overnight. We made a new high for the move. We almost kissed 5,600. But you know what turned at 3 a.m. this morning besides the S&Ps turning in the red? The Japanese yen. If you pull up a chart of the yen, that caught a bid exactly at 3 a.m. So I still think there's some lingering concerns here over the yen, right? Sold off this morning. The market went back up. So I don't know if that's all behind us here. A rip roaring rally in the yen is going to put additional uh, pressure on this market. So just from like the unknowns that are out there, I think you have to be very protective of your equity. 
Joel, is there any rotation trade opportunity then? Any sectors that you see as still having that opportunity to move higher that you could be buying? I mean, you know, if you, st- I mean, some of these stocks came down to reasonable valuations, like something like Dow. I mean, that had an uninitiated two for one stock split. You know, that is something that's, you know, the valuation came way in. Still don't know about the IWM. I mean, that jumps around like a ping pong ball. But no, I mean, seems to be the thing that it worked. And if you want to look at like the laggard chain, that kind of picked up. Look at Alta Beauty, right? Alta Beauty falls from grace. Warren steps in, right? And, you know, got a nice pop. It is yesterday is continuing today. Something like your Nike man gave that a vote of confidence yesterday. That's getting off the mat. So things that might be subject to like activism, you know, or stuff that's been beaten up. Also, I'm still digesting this move. I mean, CMG, I mean, come on. They took this out to the woodshed because this guy went to uh, Starbucks and Starbucks just had an incredible run. It's still $5 coffee, man. Starbucks and CMG has still got the burritos that everybody likes. So there's a couple stocks here that, you know, you can put on your radar looking forward. Yeah, Joel, we talked about Warren selling Apple, but now we're talking about Warren buying Alta. It's interesting to see what some of these activist investors can do for trends in certain companies. What about earnings reports? Has anything else uh, tripped your trigger as far as either what came in and the market reaction to the earnings or their forward guidance? You know what? It, It was a lot of sell the rip. It was a sell the rip on the stuff that pretty much had been flying. And You know, it really depends on what day your earnings came out, right? Because of the mood on the markets. I did, you know, you did see, you know, the buy the dip and some stuff. But if you look at it, you know, the forward guidance wasn't anything to really shake a stick at. I mean, you know, there was a lot of flat guides to lower guys. Now, you still have the big dog. You still have uh, to report later in the month. But it just seemed like it was just like a fade you know, off. They had great earnings and they ripped it for the most part. A lot of times they were met with sellers. We talked about that move in GM. Boom, that hit 50. They took it under 40. Now it's back to 45. They took Ford out to the woodshed. It took a while, but they, they ended up buying that back. So, I mean, it's still also like, where is the economy? Are we going to recession? Or are we not going to recession? Are, you know, what's it with rates? A very unclear picture here, but it seemed to be a lot of fading in the earnings. And I don't think that the forward guidance that was given is really going to, you know, boost that, you know, be bode well for the high valuation that the index is, S&P is trading at. Yeah, that big question of just how much the Fed is going to cut in September. Now the market's shifting back to that 25 basis point cut. But as you said, it all comes down to that jobs data, the last kind of data point that could move the Fed expectations. Let's talk commodities because right now, hey, gold continues to run. Gold is now over 2,500. It's 2524. It's been a continued strong gold market. A lot of people are saying this is based on Fed rate cuts. You know what? It's also momentum higher for gold. Are you seeing opportunities further in gold or even down into something like GDX? Oh, boy. I mean, you know, when it, you know, it gets up near these levels and then, you know, you're like, oh, I should probably lighten up. And then you don't. And it has like a 200, 300 dot, you know, a big uh, down swoon. You know, maybe it's going to catch a bit. It, you know, I've been in and out. I'm not selling. I, If anything, if you want to look at this, I, you know, you got to look at it as potential breakouts on the other hand. But this one thing, if you're going to try the a gold breakout in, in the GDX or whatever, Breakouts, different kind of trades, different kind of strategies, right? When you're going for the breakout, you don't want to be caught in a fake out. So, you know, the fundamentals are there. I, you know, I'd really like silver to go if you want to play the laggard trade. Silver still nowhere near even in the highs that it had earlier in the year. So maybe look for a little catch up in the silver trade. And if you're playing a breakout in the gold here, play it close to the vest. Yeah, Joel, silver is like the IWM of the precious metal space. It's, <laughs> it's, it's still the laggard as well, but I'd like to see that catch up as well. What about oil? Do you have any thoughts on oil or nat gas or energy? Holy mackerel. Oil moves around like a unbelievable move here from the low 70s. You had the double top 
just under 79 and then you had the vicious pullback you know i really i don't have a feel for this oil market i really don't i mean excessive volatility i guess if you want to look at it on a you know if you want to just take off the short-term goggles and look at it from a longer term perspective for a vast majority of the year we've been trading between 70 and 80 and right now we're at 75 so I, I, you know, recession. Oh, we don't need as much oil. Oh, the war in Middle East. That's never really cut down on the supply like people thought it would. So I think it's just I, I just have to wave the right the white flag here on the crude oil market. Hey, fair enough. Crude, as you said, has been very much range bound. It's almost been a boring market for how lively it can be. What about natural gas too? That's more volatile, but that too. Had a spike up to $3, but now is back in right around that $2 region. Not overly strong pricing, not an overly exciting market. Any fireworks coming from the natural gas sector? Oh, uh, I mean, I'm wow, I didn't realize that thing got to almost 330 and then back under $2 and making it a, um, a low of the move. Um, I would, poof, man, the way they're saying trades and super pennies, I mean, you are. You did get a bump up off that August low, and you pull back. It looks like you're finding some support here in the lower two dollar area. So I'm, you know, let it sit there for a little bit. You know, two, it's trading two fourteen right now. You know, see if you can, you know, not going to risk down to the low of the move. I know that could be quite a bit on the futures contract, but man, they sold it off hard and made a new multi-year low. So it's hard to argue that the trend is up in, in natural gas. Well, Joel, when you look at the rest of the commodities, a lot of people say they're under pressure and have been because of worries about a recession. When you look at the stock markets, people say they're up and gold is up because of the, you know, the excitement about the Fed cutting cycle has both those trends gotten priced in to the point where maybe the markets are ahead of themselves on the rate cuts or the commodities are behind themselves in these recession fears? You know what? This market's on steroids, okay? It prices in a different thing every day. And I think that in that kind of environment, like it, we reprice every day. I mean, look at the move to, or in 10 days. I mean, we went from, you know, all out emergency rate cut situation to getting good retail sales numbers. So I, the, it's hard to say that this is priced in and this is priced in because there's so much volatility. People are, are scrambling. So I don't think this market knows what to do. OK, I think there's a lot of uncertainty out there, especially with the upcoming election. And I think you just I mean. You got to play it close to the vest. You don't know if you're going to get another round, you know, with this Yen Carey trade. You know, you got the Democratic convention coming up next week. And, you know, I mean, there's just so I don't think this market can price in anything. I don't think it cares to price in anything. I just think it I mean, we're moving off numbers like those retail sales. They were they were OK. They weren't great consumer sentiment. I mean, make it a big deal. So, no, I, I don't think this market has anything priced in, upside or downside. All right. Hey, that's a good spot to end it here, Joel. It's been a wild couple weeks for these markets. And look, I understand the bullish case. I also understand the bearish case, which is probably why we have these markets that seem to flip week by week. We'll see what next week holds. But again, all eyes, more or less just waiting for that Fed meeting to see how big of a rate cut it is, and what sort of guidance the Fed gives us. Joel, again, is the co-host of the Benzinga Pre-Market Prep Show and editor of the Pre-Market Prep website. Check out that link in the show notes to follow along with Joel. And Joel, we'll chat with you next Friday. I hope you have a great weekend. All right.